for just a short time this evening, we're going to be defining uh, what is a deacon, what a deacon is. And uh, basically, we're going to look at the basically the establishment of the role, what we call it. Uh, we're going to look at uh, what the definition of the word deacon is, um, who does the deacon answer to, and uh, what does a good deacon look like. And then the next uh, sermon, we're not going to look at a lot of applications this evening, really. I believe Trevor's going to be covering the role of the deacon, so that'll be coming soon. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at the establishment of the role. William, there's, there's only a couple of scriptures in the, we'll basically look at nearly every scripture in the New Testament this evening, being two of the major three. But let's turn to Acts chapter 6. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. As I already said, William just covered this, but uh, for redundancy and for memory's sake here, um, it'll be good for us to, to see these passages a few times. So starting at Acts 6 verse 1, it says, Now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And this saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. So, as William already alluded to, the title deacon is not actually mentioned here, but the work that they are doing, that these men are set forth to do, reflects the role of a deacon. Um, these men were selected by the congregation. Um, they were selected to do the work that the 12 apostles didn't really necessarily need to be doing themselves um, as it would hinder them from their focus of evangelism and spreading the gospel. And that doesn't mean that this role was not important, that this role did not need to be addressed, but it did not require their level of skill, we'll say. Somebody else can handle that. It doesn't take an apostle where a deacon will work. But these men were put in the position to take over this responsibility of service and allowed the, the apostles to focus on more evangel, evangelistic tasks. And this is, the, this is the same as the role of the deacon here. Um, it's to be the servant of the congregation primarily in regard to, but not limited to, the, the physical needs of the congregation such that the evangelists and the elders um, can focus on the Word of God, they can focus on their study, they can focus on evangelism, and they can focus on the spiritual well-being of the congregation. And that's really the, what, why the, the, this position we see here is set in place. So now let's look at the word deacon itself. Um, I got these, Aaron actually, in his sermon on the deacon, defined these three different words. Uh, diakonos. This is being basically the proper noun defining the, the name or the position. And it's defined as servant, minister, or deacon. So those three, those, those two words there describe what a deacon is. He's a servant. He's a minister. That is what he is. Um, diaconia, diac, diaconia, this is also a noun, and it describes the role. And that's basically service, ministry, or relief. <coughs> And then the verb form, diakonia, it means to serve or to minister. So that is the action that the deacon performs. So summarizing all this, the role of the deacon is basically providing service to the congregation. So with that being said, who does the deacon answer to? Where does he get his direction and all such forth? Um, the, the deacon is selected. Uh, the deacon, I keep saying deacon, but we'll, we'll be a, there'll be a plurality of deacons. There won't be just one deacon, but in me speaking here, I'm just saying deacon. The, deacon will be select, the deacons are to be selected by the congregation. We saw there in Acts 6, uh, the 12 apostles told, told the, the congregation there to choose from among yourselves uh, those, those men. Um, he is ordained or officially set apart by the authority of the congregation. They laid hands on him. They, they're ordained position in the church. 
um, primarily to carry out the work of the church as directed by the, by the elders of the congregation. And ultimately, the deacon is to be held accountable by all. Um, he answers, of course, to the elders, but of course, just like every one of us, we're all accountable to each other, um, but especially as far as their responsibility and the uh, direction given them, they're gonna be accountable to the eldership. <clears throat> And uh, just as, as, as any of us, as any Christian, you know, our, our actions reflect that of the church. When we're, if we're in a public place and uh, we act in a, in a way that, that is not becoming of a Christian, it's, it's not just our reputation that we're, that we're tarnishing. We're tarnishing the reputation of the church. If people know you and know that you're a Christian, which they should, and they see you act in ways that it's not becoming of a Christian. The first thing they think of, well, they go to church there. They're not, you know, those are a bunch of hypocrites. And so much more so with, I would say, an officially, um, official maybe not the word I'm talking about, an ordained uh, official of the church, such as a deacon or an elder or an evangelist. It, these people are maybe more so even scrutinized or put on a higher pedestal than, than the uh, and the average member, not to say that the average member is any less, but they're going to be scrutinized that much more so. So the deacon's uh, service, his actions will definitely affect the church for, for the greater or for the worse. So when selecting these men, you want to select men who have a good reputation, a good standing, good character, good morals, who are very honest, reputable men, and not only in the congregation, but you can verify that in their lives in public too. So as I already said, there is his direction and responsibility is ultimately uh, given by the, by the elders of the congregation. And really just in, in now in closing, basically, um, as, as I said, it's going to be pretty short. And we'll do, if there's any questions, we'll, we'll open that up here in just a moment. But the purpose of all this is in, to inform everyone what, what a deacon looks, is to look like, what a deacon is in this process that we're endeavoring to uh, hopefully in the future set forth a deaconship so we have to have that knowledge before going into it so what does a, a good deacon look like um, we can read the the qualifications there in first Timothy 3 verses 8 through 13 uh, let's go ahead and do that actually um, first Timothy 3 verses 8 through 13 Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let these also first be tested, and then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Likewise, their wives must be reverent, not slanderers, temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing from great boldness and faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So those are the 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 qualifications for a deacon. These these are the things that must must be met in order to scripturally set this person in a, in this position to serve. And other things, uh, maybe just about the deacon, some some other things you want to look at. Um, in addition to those things is. Um, that he, he, he must know the congregation. He has to have an established rapport with, with the members of the congregation. The congregation, um, he understands the people, their situations, and uh, what they are in need of. Because if, if we ordain someone to, to work in this role, which often requires assessing the, the needs of a, of a needy person or something else, if, if they don't know that person and they don't have the maybe the the character and ability to become a personable person and get to know that person, they're not going to be very effective in their, in their ability to assess the situation to help determine the, uh, what, what needs may be uh, needed for, for someone who, who maybe has some financial issues or some health problems and, and just needs some help. Um, so he has to know the congregation. And also in turn, the congregation has to know him, which goes hand in hand. But um, the deacon must be someone that members can, can talk to, can approach, um, can be able to confide sometimes, you know, maybe even very personal situations with um, that, that doesn't need to be, you know, repeated to the whole congregation. It needs to be kept as private as the matter is. And uh, if you're a gossip, you, you're not, you don't need to be a deacon. 
you have to be trustworthy. People have to know and trust with sincerity that what they what they're telling them is going to be you know kept between them and kept as private as it needs to be um, for everyone's sake there. And then also he has to understand his responsibility. Um, you now your eyes have to be open when you're in such a position, not simply. Um, you know, if you think about servants, you think about a servant and the fourth, go do this, go do that, and the servant's just, okay, okay, do it. There's nothing wrong with that, but they need to have their eyes open. They need to be alert. They need to be focused on their responsibilities and understand that they have some initiative. They have some ability to recognize the situation, to see what's going on, and if they have the ability to take care of it. It's not a, well, I'm going to just wait around until somebody else tells me what to do, especially if it's a very a simple matter. Now, if it's something more complex, you need to go talk to the elders and uh, you know, further discuss the situation and see what needs to be addressed. But if it's something simple, maybe just upkeep of the church building, maybe uh, helping someone out with their yard work, doing something simple like that, you need to have the, the go-get-it attitude to just get stuff done as opposed to basically being idle. And also, he has to be, you know, has to have good communication with the eldership in order to to uh, communicate needs of the congregation to the eldership, and vice versa, to be able to um, understand a task and to be able to facilitate that in whatever way needs to be done. So that's basically what I have prepared for us this evening. In some, in summary, again, what is a deacon? I kind of wrote out a. <laughs> Very uh, unprofessional sentence here that I'm just going to have to read because I can't memorize it. But this is it. A servant selected from within the congregation, selected by the congregation, ordained to serve the church in an official uh, capacity as appointed and guided by the eldership to provide physical, uh, monetary, or spiritual help such that the eldership and evangelists may focus on the word, evangelism, and the spiritual well-being of the congregation. And I hope that that makes sense and that's clear. Um, there's not a lot more scripture we can look at. Um, and that, that's really ultimately why, why I'm pretty short here. But uh, at this time, I'll go ahead and open it up. If there's any questions that anybody has about it, if any brother would like to, to voice those, now's the time. Uh, these next, and the next lesson Trevor, Trevor's going to be discussing, and that's the, all the intended lessons on the deacon. So if you have a question, feel free to ask. I may not have the answer, but we'll be more than willing to, to further study and to get that answer for you. So does any brother have anything they'd like to request? I wanted to ask you if you comment on people's understanding. Um, maybe people are having some obscurity in their mind between... We haven't talked about elders in a while. The difference practically between an elder and a deacon. Sure. So the elder is the, I guess you would say shepherd. The elder is the shepherd. He is, his primary function is not to check that the bathrooms have all the napkins. It's not his position to check that, you know, the grounds are being kept, that um, those, those type of things. And it's not, I'm not necessarily saying that's all the deacon's role is either, but his, the elder's first and foremost role is the well-being, the spiritual well-being of the congregation. That's his focus. Teaching, understanding the, the congregation and being able to, to rebuke and to exhort and to do everything that's required to, to keep everybody in a good standing and to be able to address, address people as needed. So, agree to that? Or, okay. yeah. And also the deacon is more of a, more of a physical role in uh, performing tasks such as, you know, helping the elderly. Um, and Trevor, will, I believe, will have more uh, applications here than, than what I'm listing off here. But in service roles such as that, uh, maybe tending to the church building, the meeting house, making sure everything is prepared for a gospel meeting, doing a lot more of those day-to-day -day skills that, yes, the elder can do, but no, that's not his focus. And taking that off of his plate so that he can focus on the spiritual well-being of the congregation. Any other questions, comments? All right. Well, well that'll com conclude our study this evening. I hope it's been beneficial. Um, of course, we wouldn't want to close the service without extending the invitation. I believe everybody here really is under the sound of my voice has obeyed the gospel of age, basically. But 
I may be missing someone. If you've never obeyed the gospel and you have a desire to, to obey the gospel, to join the church, to have your sins washed away, to, to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, we give you that opportunity at this time. Or if you've sinned in some, some manner and you need to make that right before the congregation, we give you the opportunity at this time while we stand and sing.